define purpose for the roof level is going to be 230 by 400 so it's going to be 230 by 400 so we can take this down so we don't forget so we say the first floor we're going to have we're going to create a 230 by 450 beams and then we're going to also create a 230 by 550 beams the 230 by 550 beams are going to be the beams if you look at our first floor the ones that are marked cyan because these beams have cantilevers projecting beyond the termination point of the slab and then these cantilevers are carrying they are carrying the columns going straight to the roof so we envisage significant bending moment that will be transferred onto the beams internally and if you look at these internal beams the beam is about 5.024 right and it's taking load from that two-way slab and the one-way slab and taking point load from that so for trial member sizing the beams that are carrying these subsiding floors i remember there's going to be very high reactions on these beams because of the floors that it is carrying this is on the first floor it's carrying second floor third floor and then roof level so reactions from the columns on the subsiding floors are going to be taken up by these beams so we decided to you know for the purpose of preliminary analysis we're going to make these beams we're going to make them 230 by 550. the other ones that are not marked we're going to make them 230 by 450. 230 by 450. so we said um so first floor to 550 to 450 then for the second floor we're going to have typically 230 by 450 beams and then for the roof level we're going to have 230 by 400 beams the roof is not envisaged to have continuous access because you have the roofing sheet and roof truss above it so the roof level is slabbed but will not have continuous access and so we intend to make the slab thickness just 100 millimeters and then the beams are going to be designed to be 230 by 400 beams so you come back to your environment you go to define rectangle because our beams are rectangular sections so y is the depth z is your width right so we're creating um 230 by 450 pay attention to the units units are in meters then we're also going to create 230 by 550 you add as soon as you create you add once you add it it moves to this location you, you see the structural member sizes you're creating then we're going to create for the roof 230 by 400 and then for the columns we're going to create 230 by 230 so let's assign let's look at how it's done before you assign property just take it one after the other we go to the first floor select the entire first floor view select member object only click on plan view so go back here first floor So be careful so you don't make a mistake um we say this whole beam is 230 by 450 on grid one you go to 30 by 450 you say assign you select this this that this this So he calls it reference one. 
okay because these are the reference tag reference one reference two and so on then we say this is 20 by 450 this this in fact the beams in the horizontal directions are all 230 by 450 so you can as well take them like that and assign to selected beams assign okay now the beams in the vertical direction we said this beam we are looking at 230 by 550 same as this beam so you select the appropriate beam select the member property by 550 So we're looking at this beam and then that beam, right? This beam and then that beam, 230 by 550. Okay? So you take this beam and that. And then this beam and then that beam there. We selected the wrong beam, so you deselect this and then you select this beam. Note very carefully that our concern is the cantilevers that are projecting this length, and it's very possible for you to have this beam to be 230, this span of this beam to be 230 by 450. And then change the span, change the cross section on this span to be 230 by 550. The implication is that you have a larger drop on the cantilever side of this structure, which has significant no effect. The top of concrete elevation on this and this side will be the same, but you have a 100 mm difference at the surfeit of the concrete. But we just intend to make the entire beams of the same cross section. So that's 30 by 550. And then here the same. So you have here and here. You have here and then here. And then here. Okay, so you assign as soon as you assign it gives it the correct tag r2 r1 as the case implies okay so um what is outstanding now is if you're not certain about which member has no property go to select by missing attributes and say missing property it will select the members that do not have a property currently based on what is showing on the environment so you can see that we have not assigned property to this member as well as to these members so let's assign 230 by 450, select everything and then assign. Okay, so we are through with the first floor. We are fine. The first floor has assigned members all. So we go to the second floor, right click, front view, select all of these, view, selected object only, top view. You go to your structure arrangement for the second floor.
so we said here all the beams are 230 by 450 to optimize weight okay and control weight associated with dead loads okay so 230 by 450 are all the weight. so in engineering one of the considerations in structural design is that you know you need to ensure weight control is very well optimized because higher weights impact the cost of the project because materials will be increased and then it has actually increased costs okay on your structure so 230 by 450 select all 230 by 450 and then assign great so let's go to the second floor Okay, so 230 by 450, same. You assign and you're fine. Then you go to the roof level. We said the roof is 230 by 400. Okay, so the roof beams are 230 by 400. So you select all of them and then you assign. As soon as you're true, you know, you can view the entire structure. You see that your members are well assigned. Now, any member that is omitted, you can check for members that do not have properties by going to select by missing specification, missing property. So I selected all, so which are the columns. So let's view the columns only. You go to view view selected objects only it shows you only the columns so we said all our columns are 230 by 230 so you go to 30 by 230 select all the columns and then assign to them so you're fine you can view the 3d of your structure like that so this is the entire 3d model you can see what you have built something you need to understand in style we need to explain and in most analytical applications most analytical softwares the members are framing into each other at centroid to centroid so members meet at centroid to centroid because that's the directrix from which your structural idealization is made so you need to note that the members meet at centroid to centroid is very crucial in some kinds of complicated structure analysis where a member is above another member you will need to offset your beams to idealize that representation so as soon as you have modeled your structure the next thing you need to do is to create your supports so remember that these columns are connected to the foundation and that at the foundation level let's look at what is going there so at the foundation level the structure cannot move vertically it cannot move horizontally neither can it rotate therefore you have a fixed support in a fixed support a structure is encastered implying that it is restrained against translational and rotational movement so it cannot move in the vertical direction so it's a vertical reaction it cannot move in the horizontal react in the horizontal direction and there's a horizontal reaction in accordance with Newton's third law that for every action there must be a corresponding equal and opposite reaction. In the same way, the structure cannot rotate, and that's why you have a wind. Therefore, the support you have on all these tangents is a fixed support. So you create a fixed support. You go to support, create, fixed, add. So we have created a fixed support. So we need to select all the joints at the foundation level and assign it to that. So you go to front view, select all these joints, all of them, go to your supports, and then assign your fixed supports. You're fine. Okay, so we are making good progress. 
the next stage or next step is to carry out your structural loading watch very careful how we're going to do that so you go to load and definition now let's go to our load calculation sheets so we start from the roof level now the look at the entire load from the slab so we have the cell rate of the slab is 100 millimeter thick we said so and then the felting on the slab so we're going to have felting okay because of the ingress of runoff water so if you look at the way the architecture had designed the roof you have that roof slope there you have slope there and then slope you know normal to your screen so implying that during rainfall water comes from there come from the other side normal to your screen and then it flows like this okay so it flows here and the other way so this uh, from experience there's a potential for runoff waters if the roofing sheet is not properly done or with time when structure starts aging there are potentials for runoff waters to seep into the concrete and so if the concrete is not felted you would have um, percolation because of the permeability of concrete over time and then it can impact on the integrity of the structure so it's crucial that you felt and then you calculate the weight of felting look so we've done that so total dead load on the roof is 2.5 km square we need to apply this on the roof beam but let's take it one step at the other the first thing to define your self weight of the entire structure so add load case one so primary load case so we have primary we have load generation so start can automatically generate loads and then we have load combination when you're combining your loads in, in compliance with the code of practice so primary load case load case one we call it self weight so this is self weight of the entire structure so under this load case you add so there are different types of loads you can add in start different static loads member load contracted load distributed load uniform vein distributed load you know pressure load hydrostatic load non-varying pressure loads like those loads you have on a doubly eccentric part foundation where the pressure intensities on each of the edges of the part foundation varies you can create those kind of complex loading instead it's a very powerful application so this is self weight so you can apply the self weight either in the x y or z if you're doing structural dynamics where the structure is subjected to excitational forces and the participatory masses can vibrate in the x z or y direction you have to apply the self weight in the various direction in which the structure can vibrate but in this case you are doing a static analysis and then the self weight is applied in the vertical y direction because it's acting downwards be very careful look at the coordinate system you have your x y and z if you put it if you put your factors positive y you'll be wrong because your weight will be acting upward which is not true your weight acts downwards okay toward the center of gravity so you put the factor to be minus one once you say add what start though this is an auto load generation start with calculate the surface of the entire structure by itself by using the density of the materials you have modeled that's why it's important you model your material correctly and give it material property like you see here concrete so when you go to load self-weight we have created the self-weight load it shows you a question mark because you've assigned it here to any member so click here select all the members and then assign to selected beams assign yes that's all once you have assigned it will no longer be question mark because you have assigned next step we are going to apply the load we are going to take it one after the other we apply the loads on the on the roof level apply on the third floor level apply second floor then first floor level just like that so we start from the roof level so we select the entire roof beams view selected object only like that and look at this here so the next thing we say add roof load on roof beams um, okay we say roof slab dead load on roof beams we shorten it to roof slab dead load on beams Add. Go 
bad to your calculation.